Chapter 8 Sue was still awake. She was sitting in the window of Kitten Caboodle. As she saw me approaching it, she tapped on the glass, then motioned to me, frowning. I stopped, cocked my head. I was sodden and chilled, and the thought of her company was comforting and warm. I jumped through her mail slot and landed on the floor in a wet, sliding skid. Good grief, she said. What were you doing on the streets? For an answer, I sneezed. That's all she had to hear. Two minutes later, I was sitting on one of her beauty parlor chairs with the nozzle of a hairdryer pointed at my flanks. Its humming made it much too difficult to talk, but she communicated nicely with a loud, ringing glare. She can glare louder than anyone I know. She's a green-eyed redhead, high-tailed, long-limbed, short-haired, and sassy. The dryer clicked off and her mouth clicked on. Hotshot detective, macho man, she said, hasn't got the sense to come in out of the rain. She paused and cocked her head. Or possibly you couldn't detect it was raining. It was raining, I was forced to concede. Cats and dogs. I have never understood that expression, Sue sniffed, and I don't think I want to. I explained about the dog. She tried to keep an attitude of stony disapproval, but she broke down and giggled. Rode him? she said. I nodded. She was fixing me a warm dish of milk. She'd learned how to operate the microwave oven and took a lot of unexpected pride in her cooking. By now, we were sitting on a counter in the back. The door to the guest rooms behind us on the left, a pink quilted sofa beside us on the right, and a fair breeze blowing through the pink flowered drapes. Tell me more, she said, shoving me the warm plate of milk. Tell me about the case. I told her about the case. I liked the way she listened, all eyes, all ears. Sugary, she said, is awfully sweet, don't you think? She'd put the accent on, awfully. I looked at her and grinned. I said, stop being catty. Who, me? she said. Never. I smiled and sipped milk. On the other hand, she said, it's truly awful about Max. It's so completely unfair. And I bet when old Meanie hears, Pshew! She made a sound like a gun being fired. I winced. She was right. Meanie, no kidding, is the guy who owns the building. Horton F. Meanie. I couldn't make it up. And the man fits the name. And if Meanie found out about Max, that he was even suspected of a crime. Pshew! It was definite that Max would be fired. I was silent for a time. Sam? You all right? Yeah, just thinking. Think aloud, she said. Otherwise I tend to get lonely. I think, I said, the burglar had the key to the terrace door. To all three terrace doors. So how do you get the key? Are you asking? I'm thinking. You think, she said. He'd been to the Crandall's place before, and he also must have been to the Kellys and the Coens. I nodded. So the question is, who do they know in common? She shrugged at me. Maybe it's the pizza man, she said, or the guy who delivers laundry. Not, I said. I saw him. Oh, she said. Right. I thought for a minute, and finished off the milk in a hard single gulp, the warm liquid fire of it trickling into my limbs. I said, tell me something, Red. She said, don't call me Red. I said, tell me something, Sue. She said, better. Okay, so how about any other robberies on the block? Have you heard of any? Nope. 
She licked the last drop of milk. How about the neighborhood, she said. Does that count? I looked at her. Answer that question yourself. She nodded. It counts. Okay. There was Sandy. They were robbed July 4th. He told me about it Thursday while Harry did his nails. There was also Lady Anne. Poor dear, we had to give her that disgusting shampoo. She got fleas, if you can imagine. She grinned at me suddenly. And you know where she got them? I nodded. In her hair. She laughed. In Beverly Hills. Is that a hoot, she said. Or what? I frowned. Get to the point. They were robbed last Saturday. How do you know Saturday? Because, she said patiently, Lady Anne was there. Bingo, I said. I want her full name and address, and Sandy's while you're up. Come on, Sam. She looked hard at me. You know I'm not supposed to. Hey, Red, I said, grinning. If you'd done what you're supposed to, you'd still be in a butcher shop in Muncie, Indiana. True, she said cheerfully, and opened the appointment book and read me off the facts.